I'd like to talk today about <clears throat> another great approach to non-dual awakening, the use of chanting as a meditative process. Many people have chanted for millennia, but not so much have they used it for pure meditational approaches. Some things you should do differently if you're going to make it a meditative approach rather than just chanting. Not that chanting is a just, but to really deepen the process meditatively. Important things are to, if possible, keep your eyes closed. And most importantly, when you do the chant, is to be very present for keeping within your breath. There are ways to breathe for chanting. Typically for chanting, we inhale from the bottom up, belly, chest, shoulders, fill up the glass, and then we chant from the top down. Top, chest, belly. This is how opera singers do it. That's how you keep a long, smooth, flowing breath to support your chanting. <clears throat> Using this breathing technique, this filter from the bottom up, draining it from the top down, we do our chants. We start with some very simple in this practice. There are three very simple chants detailed in my book, which you can download, uh, that I'll go through here. Three ancient Vedic chants. These go back three, four thousand years. They're old traditional ones for a long time ago. And they've turned out to be very powerful ones and very simple ones to learn. These are also all in the book. First of these is Asatoma. This goes, and there are there are also three different regions in the chest where we try to resonate through to do our chant. So as we talk about this, there's a something down deep in the Hara region. There's an area in the middle of the chest. And there's also the third eye. Those three areas are where we put our tones for these Vedic chants. This one goes, Asatoma Sangamaya Tama so ma jo tir kamaya mrit yur ma umritam kamaya As you move that breath around, top to bottom going through the sounding apparatus, eyes closed, be present for the arising of the chant, piece by piece. Be present for the space within which the chant arises. If you can, follow the chant off to the end. See where the chant falls away into. This simple chant, this Asatoma Sat Kamaya, is really asking to be led into understanding. Sat is being. Asat is a negation in Sanskrit, so Asat is from non-being, Ma is to, sat is being, kamaya is lead me. So you're saying, asatoma sat kamaya. You're being asked to be led from non-being or confusion, ma to sat, clarity, consciousness, stillness. Kamaya, lead me. We traditionally take this not as asking somebody outside to lead you, but it's really kind of a surrender of your ego to this greater truth that's really already installed, this beingness within you. So we're being asked, our ego, asking to be led from asat to sat. Confusion to clarity. Second line. Tamas ma jyotir kamaya. Tamas is darkness, uh, torpor. Uh. To be led from tamas ma to Jyotir, the light. So being led from darkness to light. And the last one is mritur, which is death. Ma amritam, the eternal bliss of understanding. Kamaya. So it's kind of a chant of surrender and a way to you know, let the ego drop into this space of willingness to be led as opposed to leading. So again it goes, asatu. Ma sat kamaya 
Kama so ma ju tir kama ya mrit yur ma omritam kama ya. As many times as you want to say that, eyes closed, following the breath, watching for the breath, watching the chant arise out of stillness, watching the chant arise into a space of emptiness and then fall away back into stillness again. That's the first chant. second one is a little more complicated, at least phonically. <clears throat> this is Krato Smara Krutum Smara. Krato is from Krutta, which is to do. Krato is the one who actually gives out the gifts in reward for what you have done kind of like Santa Claus, or God, or whatever, the divine. Smara means remember. Krutam is the one who actually does the act, the action, and Smara is remember. So it's really the doer, you, asking the giver of rewards to remember you. Twice you ask to be remembered. You're trying to make certain that you're Efforts have been rewarded, understood, and will be rewarded. You can also take this as a chant of surrender, where you, the Krittam, the one who has done the work, surrenders what you have done to universal consciousness, God, the divine, the universe, burning bush, whatever works for you. So it's really bringing up your past good deeds, your past bad deeds, and surrendering them into the infinite. This has a very interesting sequence of tones. Four different sequences. Krato smara krutum smara Krato smara krutum smara Krato smara krutum smara <clears throat> Krato smara krutum smara So four different sequences of tones. Krato smara krutum smara Krato smara krutum smara Krato smara krutum smara Krato smara krutum smara So four different sequences. And you'll feel they have a very different energy in your body. Uh, people who have worked on this with me for a while say this is a very sticky chant. It's a very engaging, it's a very powerful chant. And you'll find this one has ability to take on a power of its own to operate. So a very useful second chant. One more time. Krato smara krutum smara Krato Smara Krutum Smara Krato Smara Krutum Smara Krato Smara Krutum Smara The final chant is one of the old chants of the 60s and way before, millennia before. It's really the peace chant. Loka Samasta Sukinu Bhavantu. Loka is the worlds. Samasta is all the worlds. Sukinu is well being, and Bhavantu is I wish. So I wish well being to all the worlds. You can also use this to wish well being to friends, family, enemies, uh, someone in great difficulty. You can hold them in your consciousness as you chant this chant. Again, this can be watched for how it arises in consciousness, where it falls back into. Loka Samasta Sukhinu Bhavantu Traditionally done three times, you can do as many times as you want to. Any one of these three chants can be used very powerfully by you to 
move yourself along this path to awakening. This watching where the chant comes from. Because really wants you to focus your attention. Look where the chant arises from. Where it goes away into. Much more important than the chant itself. I encourage you to do this is one of the most powerful windows into awakening. Non-dual. Namaste. Thank you.